Karen from Lion Gate Farm and today I am going to teach you an easy way to needle felt pumpkins. This is a sparkly one. There's so many different options. So join us for the next hour, I guess, or maybe however long it takes you. And um, I'll teach you how to make big ones. I'll talk about how to make tiny ones and you can get your fall decor on. So let's go. All right, today we are going to felt pumpkins. As you can see, there's many kinds of pumpkins you can do. And yesterday I made this guy. I call him dryer lint because he kind of looks like the lint that comes out of your dryer, but he's sparkly. He's fun. It's gray with some blended rainbow colors. And he has a, a, a needle felted stem. So if you, right now is the time, it's zucchini time, it's pumpkin time. If you save your stems and dry them, like this one, from your, your garden produce, or even your Halloween pumpkins for next year, you can do that. You can make tiny pumpkins. And this just has a stick, that's a little piece of stick that's cut and glued in. So lots of ways to make stems and I'll try and go over them as we go. So today I think I'm gonna make a green pumpkin. You're gonna need core wool, quite a bit of it if you want a big pumpkin. Not very much if you want tiny pumpkins. And then you need whatever color. Oh look, here's another pumpkin. Um, you need whatever color that you're going to make your pumpkin. I'm gonna make mine kind of greens and oranges today. And then you'll need some twine or some very strong thread. Um, maybe some scissors, maybe. Whatever color your stem is going to be or if you're going to use a regular stem. Of course you need your needle. So I'm gonna use a pen tool and a single needle. And I think that's about it. Felting surface, of course. So then we'll get going. So first you have your core wool. And I'm probably gonna make a bigger pumpkin today. The same. The same technique applies to the tiny pumpkins that I'm going to do. And I got to tell my dog to lay down. Rippy, lay down. Lay down. Good boy. Okay. He's starting to pace because it's almost his dinner time. So first, we're going to take our core wool and we're just going to wad it up. If you have junk wool sitting at home, wad it up tight. Wad it up. Just make a big wad here really tight. This is the center. So this is obviously a bigger pumpkin because this is going to be my center. It's way too much if I was making a small one. And I'm just going to tack it. I'm going to tack it right there. So we have this. Better tack that piece too. This is the center of my pumpkin. So if you have junk wool, like a pile of wool you don't know what to do with, look it came apart. You can put it in the middle of your pumpkin. It's a good way to use up stuff you're never going to use. Um, but core wool works just as well. I know that some people wad up old socks or fabric or whatever just to get it inside of this pumpkin. And then, now I have little pieces here today. Oh wait, maybe I have some bigger stuff. There we go, I got some bigger stuff. Alright, so we're just going to wrap and I don't want you to worry about spines or anything yet you know the lumps on the pumpkin just you're gonna make your pumpkin about a third the core will bigger than you want the finished product and you'll understand that in a minute so I'm just drafting that out putting it on here it doesn't matter if it comes apart Now, the next time I put some on, though, I'm not going to go in this same spot. I'm going to turn my pumpkin. Kind of go next to that spot. I'm just going to keep adding wool. Remember, felting is not a race. I, I'm kind of quick at this because I've been doing it for a long time. I don't know where you guys are, but it's hot outside. I think it's 101, Canon said here already. This 
supposed to be 105 today here in town because we're out of town. We're kind of rural out. We are a little bit cooler than in town, but 105 is still 105. Adding and adding. So notice I'm not adding on the top or the bottom because I want my pumpkin to be wide and low. If you want it rounder, you're just going to go around all the way. I'm going to add, well, maybe I'm not. I'm going to add a couple pieces at one time here. This is core wool. I don't really care what it looks like. And I'm just kind of stabbing it on. Notice I'm not like super felting it. He's pretty, because we wrapped up that initial piece, he's pretty firm already in the middle. So now wherever my top is, which is right there, I'm gonna start working it down a little bit and my bottom right in the center you know where the stems attach who knows maybe that will be the top let's get some more wool here so on core wool my core wool when it's in pieces like this you know, wool follows its friends because of the scales on the on the fibers and I can make it into a strip just by let drafting it out not too far so I say I took those pieces and they just follow their friends into this strip so I'm going to go around. So if you have a strip, you're going to pull it off at the bottom. If you want to use a 36 size needle for this, I'm using a 38, a stronger needle. It will go faster. I'll make this a warty pumpkin. I like those warty pumpkins. The sky is really the limit on anything you can do. And color. You can make them any color you want. two needles in this. Again, I keep working the area where the stems would be. Just lightly felting everything on. One more piece and then I think we'll go to the next step. I pull it a little bit tight when I come around. Just a little bit. Lightly felting it in. So I have my pumpkins. That's him. So what we're going to do next is take some twine. Um, I get this at the hardware store. 
this is the fastest way to make a pumpkin that there is. I want you to take a tail, leave a tail of about, you know, 12 inches. Just put your finger there. And we're gonna come around and we are going to tie a knot. You'll see what this does. So center of the pumpkin, you want your knot. You're gonna pull it pretty tight. You can see it sinking in on the sides. See the twine is there. Don't worry if you can't see it. You'll be able to feel it. So we're gonna tie it a little knot. It's kind of like wrapping a package. Now we're gonna go around. There's our center on the bottom. We're gonna come up to the center here and tie another knot. Pull it tight. I am not coordinated enough to not tie the knot. If you think you can do it without tying a knot every time, go for it. But I have to tie a knot. Now we're gonna quarter him. Now this part, this is where you need to make sure that you're coming, put your finger, come around, put your finger on the bottom. Bring it up, tie it again. See how my pumpkin is shrinking? So like I said, if you want him really big, make him about a third bigger than you want. Tie a knot and one more quarter. Make sure they're still in the middle. We have to go to here. We're gonna come around. I suppose if you wanted skinnier sections, you could go again. Okay, this is the last one, tie a knot. And you can see all four of my, all these ones are right crossed in the middle here. See how thin it got? Now, you want about the same amount of twine. I really like the twine stems because we're gonna wrap it back on itself. I didn't leave very much on that one, but this one I did. I left a lot on this one. We're gonna wrap it on our stem. Okay, so now we have this. Now we're gonna find our twine. So the first piece of twine's right there. I want to felt down the twine. Just so I know where it's at. There's one there. There's one here. Sometimes they move. So just find where they're at. There's the next one. See, that's wide. And that's okay, because pumpkins do that. I'm also poking a little bit sideways. I'm not poking in the center of of each section. This is a little loose. Sometimes you'll get going and you'll catch one side and go, whoops, that belongs over there. Careful not to stab yourself. We all know that hurts. So see, this is loose, so I'm just gonna tack it up to the twine. You can already see the pumpkin is starting to form. There should be one right there. I know a lot of people wet felt their pumpkins. That takes too much time. They look cool. This is a quick, easy felted guy. Now, remember pumpkins are not smooth. They're kind of lumpy bumpy. So, so now I'm felting. A little bit along. So 
We want these to stick out from the twine, which is why we tied them so tight. So I'm gonna felt sideways into them so that they will stand up. I don't wanna felt down this part too much. If I do, it's very light because that will collapse them. See how this is loose? That I will pull over and tighten it up. But again, at the twine. Now on the bottom here, we're gonna, we're gonna felt this a little bit flat so it'll sit flat. So that will sit flat. You know how when you're picking out a pumpkin, you gotta make sure it sits exactly right for carving. At least I do. So this is lumpy. I'm gonna felt over towards the twine. Okay, now, believe it or not, we're ready for color. So let's do a little bit of blending here. I've got this lichen color and I'm gonna blend some orange fire star into it. So I just ripped off a piece. So if we think about this, it's gonna take about that much for each one. But let's just take this off for right now. So I have this much. Firestar goes a long way. Firestar's nylon. It doesn't felt really well unless it's mixed with wool. So we're gonna pull some off and we're just gonna blend it with our hands. If you have a dog brush or hand cards, you can blend it that way. This is going to give us a sparkly lichen colored pumpkin. So you can see the little bit of orange in there. Maybe you can. I don't know if you can on the video. So what I'm going to do is lay it on here. And I'm going to again, I'm going to tack it along the twine. I'll pull it down to the bottom or to the top. This is the top. Pull it down. The top is always the spot with your twines, your excess twines. See our orange in there? We're gonna lightly felt this on. There's our, I lost my twine, my twine's there. Let's So remember, just the tip of your needles work. Only to there do your needles work. You do not need to go hog wild and poke a lot. So now this is up at the top. Again, I'm felting towards the center from either side to keep this all poofed out like this. Now I also have here, this is called sunflower and it has a whole bunch of colors in it. You can see it has reds, oranges, it's a good blend. So I'm gonna pull just a tiny piece of that off and add that up here to the top. So I can get a little bit more depth of color. So this isn't all one color. And then if I have a thin spot, I will have a little thin spot there. I can see my corbel. I'm just gonna add some more. spot there but I can also take a little bit of fire star blend that in let's give him some more sparkles I'm gently felting the center I mean if you want to felt it hard you can there's no it's nice and squishy no reason to like the 
fluffy pumpkins. All right, so let's go to the next one. We need some more of this green. And a little fire star. That's a lot of fire star. We'll see what happens. I'm just going to pull gently blend these colors. You can do this with any colors. It doesn't have to be fire star. You can end up with a completely different color. Just that everything's better with some kind of glitter. We have a nice big piece of fire star there. I like my fibers to all go one way when I'm doing this. I'm felting with Corydale, so it felt very easy. If you're doing Merino, it's going to be a little bit tougher because you'll see the holes. Now you can see I ended up with a spot that's missing, so let's go for this sunflower color. Add it in here. Why well, is going top to bottom? or bottom to top. So I still have my twines up here. Don't lose them because you can felt them right in. And you can see he's starting to take on some depth with his greenness. So I'm just going to keep doing this all the way around the pumpkin, and um, when we come back, I'll teach you how to do the stem. So let's keep going. All right, so I'm still blending here. You can see the fire star in this one. I have a piece that's all curled up. I don't want. All right, so I'm on pretty much on the last one been working on it for about 20 minutes I'm gonna say remember it's not a race you don't have to go fast this one wasn't all the way on yet So now I am felting a little bit in the middle here. Because that guy's a little bit not smooth. I want to get him nice and smooth. And I'm not felting deep. I'm felting pretty shallow. There I'm felting on this twine. I'm felting it in. Because I want those lines. So let's take sunflower to finish this bottom piece off. I like these pre-blended Corydale Slivers. This one is called Sunflower. It's in my shop online. I saw that almost stab myself. The green that we're using today is called lichen. It's one of my favorite greens for stuff. All right, so we have a pumpkin, but it's kind of flat, so we need to add some stuff to it. So we're gonna add a stem. Now, this is where, if you're gonna use your regular stem, it would look pretty cool, but I'm gonna show you how to make a stem. And if I was going to use a regular stem, I would probably take some strong carpet thread and a, and a strong needle and go all the way through and tie it so that it's tighter like that because yeah, it would look way better 
if that was like that. But for today's intents and purposes, I'm gonna move some of this out of the way. We have blue face luster locks, which I did not mention at the beginning, that we're gonna use as our curlies. And I have some gray for a stem here. I'm gonna take my skewer. You know how much I like my skewers. And I wanna decide how, how big my stem's gonna be. I'm gonna hold my thumb and I'm going to wrap my skewer up and down with this little piece of gray that I have. I want it smaller at the top. And then this will be the base. And then I'm gonna felt it a little bit. I want it skinnier at the top. Then I'm going to slide it off. I'm going to tack it on. I'm still working around those twines. People pick these pumpkins up by their stems, so you want to make sure that it is well felted on. It's just a thing. I used about a quarter ounce, well, a little bit less than a quarter ounce of green and not even an eighth of an ounce of the sunflower on this. But you know, it's it's not a lot of wool on this size pumpkin. This is about a six inch pumpkin. So now, once you have your stem on, you're gonna take your little twines and just wrap them around. So I kind of like to take the second one and work it under the first one. So when I'm at the end, I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of my fiber, tack that down. You could put a drop of glue, but you know, oftentimes we have our felting stuff and we're out and about and don't have any glue. That's how you're gonna do it. You're gonna use your wool glue. Let's take the other one and we're gonna wrap. Squishing it down. It's probably hard to see. Sometimes I leave enough to get to the top. Sometimes I don't. This time I did. So see I have some loose fibers right here. Tack that end down. You can felt in your twine. There's little, it felts pretty good actually. So now what we have here is a pumpkin that needs some. So this is some scrap silk that I had somewhere. This is why you never throw anything away. And I'm gonna go down in between along my twine. You don't have to go the whole way. You can go the whole way if you want to. Just another layer of contrast in there. You can see he's still pretty fluffy. Yeah, 
Yeah, any of your scrap wool makes great little accents. So I'm going to add some locks there in a minute. But remember, you got a, a pumpkin that has a stem down here. It's all about the details. He's a little messy right there. So I'm going to take some of this. You know where that little stem goes right down here. I don't know if you're following me on my Lion Gate Farm Facebook page, but we do have a felting group now. It's Southern Oregon Felting, Lion Gate Farm. You can find it from my page, I'm pretty sure. Go join. Show me what you're making. I'd love to see your pumpkins. I would love to see anything you've made from our videos. I know a couple of you have posted. It's pretty cool. So then you have your locks. Okay, when you are looking at your blue face locks, when you buy them from me, or from anyone, you're gonna see that sometimes they get stuck together. They do a little bit of their own felting when you dye them. Always pull them apart from the tip end, not the cut end, because then you get the best looking tendrils. So if, and if you get too much fuzz, take your scissors, cut it off. If you want, if you don't wanna see the fuzz, I like to use lots of different colors. So this one, you can leave it. You can leave it in a in a pile like that. Stab it on up in the stem. This color is kind of fun. I don't like that fuzz at the top. You can also use the fuzz to attach the lock. I have some that are not the same color here. If you're washing your own wool, always pull your locks from the tip, just the same. Since they're nice and long. And then if you want them to be a little shorter, you can just gather them up them in there. There you have it. One nifty little pumpkin. Now if you want to make a stack, these are just stat so I made a stack. I made one I made one then the other and I just poked them together like this. If you want to make a stack of pumpkins, you could do big stack. You know, I could add that one to that one but I love these little guys. So these I tied with a strong linen thread instead of the twine. You can still see it. But same thing, I used different colors of wool unless I did the glitter, white glitter pumpkin. He's just all white. This color is called mink. It looks lavender, but it's really kind of grayish. It's interesting. But I like it in a pumpkin, it's kind of good. Big one and a little one. Okay, there you have it. A whole bunch of pumpkins. Thanks for joining me today with my quick little pumpkin video. Um, if you like it, make sure you click like on our YouTube channel and follow us so you can see our updates and our weekly videos. We try to do one every week. Um, head over to liongatefarm.org. If you need some supplies, click on the farm store, have all the wool in there, and then join us on Facebook, Lion Gate Farm.